Happy Wednesday, kittens. It is the 2nd of April, 2014, and this is Not a Podcast, episode 64. Hi, I'm your host, Amanda. You can find me on Ravelry as Wit or as So Nitpicky on Plurk, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and on YouTube. The podcast is also available on iTunes under, I believe it is So Nitpicky Video Cast, if you would prefer to watch it there. So we've done the welcomes. Uh, I had a quick thank you for Helper118 on iTunes. Thank you so much for giving me the star review. I appreciate it. And I suggest to any of you who are iTunes watchers to make sure to give some love to all of your favorite podcasts by reviewing them. So let's see, we can review. It's actually been a very quiet week. I don't have too much to say about it. It's been very busy and gone quickly yet slowly at the same time, which is always funny when those things happen. And today is my husband's birthday, so I'm a little rushed. I have been making chili and I'm about to go make cake as soon as I'm done with this. And I've just been running around and doing lots of little things, trying to get ready for when he comes home. One of those things about being an adult is you don't take your birthday off, so he's at work, and I am here just doing my normal thing today. Uh, Let's see. The only other thing I could mention is I'm actually wearing a hand knit today, a very old one, in fact, from, I finished it in December 2007. This is one of the first sweaters I ever knit. This is one that was for my husband, and it's very large on me, but it's a chilly day, and I felt like wearing something that's similar to a sweatshirt, and this fits the bill. This was the Manly Maze pattern from No Sheep For You. I was a bad podcaster. I did not write down all the information. And this was one of the very first things I knit. I learned how to knit in May 2007, and I very quickly moved on to tackling big projects, because that's the kind of crafter that I am. When I first learned how to quilt, I went immediately from reading in theory to a queen-sized sawtooth star bed quilt, which is the one that I refer to from time to time as the Franken quilt. It didn't go the best, and this sweater has definitely seen better days, and it's not the best constructed either. Um, it was knit in uh, Knit Picks Swish DK in a couple different colorways. It's the gauge is a little loose on it. Um, it never quite fit my husband properly. The arms were too short. The body was a little bit too short. And it's just funny looking at things like my make ones now and seeing how messy they were. That they slightly gape. They have little. They almost look like eyelets. <laughs> and this sweater has definitely pilled and not worn the best, but it's still comfortable and it keeps me warm. So I'm wearing it today. I have a quick little finished object for you that I buried under everything else. Uh, This week I decided that I needed some more dishcloths and I had found a random skein of, uh, what is it, Lily sugar and cream that was hiding in my stash. So I quickly banged out a couple of grandma's favorite dishcloths, which I have not woven the ends into because I'm lazy like that. And these took me, I think, for the two of them together, three, maybe four hours. I love dishcloths as um, instant gratification knitting, and they are so simple to do. You can find this pattern in many forms on the internet. It's a very popular pattern. It's very common. Uh, My mother-in-law originally gave me a written out version of this not too long after I had started knitting. Probably actually the same trip when I finished this sweater at her house in December of 2007 and yeah she shared that with me and I've used it several times since then and I'm finally trying to get my husband to get on board with the knitted dishcloth thing sorry the words not coming out of the mouth today so we'll just uh yeah we'll keep moving on I'm not gonna dwell on it too much I do have quite a few works in progress Um, the first one is the modern log Cabin Blanket by Kay Gardner and Ann Shane of Mason Dixon Knitting. It was so large that I'm not going to show it to you live. I took a video the other day of it. So as you can see, it's very large already. I believe there are nine 
blocks of color on the pattern as written. And I've had three done so far. That third block is almost 1.7 skeins of Barocco Vintage, which is what I'm using for the blanket. That pink color is fondant, and that was a colorway I picked up to try to make the blanket a little bit more like my daughter and a little bit less like uh, leftovers from my son's blanket. And I'm knitting those on US size tens. If you followed me on Instagram and you saw the broken needle, it was the needle for that blanket. <laughs> it broke right as I was recording, or actually after I had recorded last week's podcast. A lot of times when I'm doing editing and I know that there isn't a lot to to uh, edit out or a lot of captions to write. I will bring a simple knitting project over and work on that in between. And I started knitting. I got maybe eight stitches in. And all of a sudden I noticed that the back end of my needle felt funny and kind of loosey-goosey. And I went to look and my cable had broken off and was hanging by a thread. And as I'm looking at it, it finished snapping. And I'm pretty sure I did a Darth Vader-esque, no. <laughs> As these stitches all came piling off the needle and uh, it was bad. But anyway, my replacement is on its way because it turns out that the lovely person I bought it from happens to be an authorized dealer for Knitter's Pride and I can get a free replacement for that. So that's all good. I'm hoping to see that sometime a little later this week, maybe early next week. My second work in progress is another blanket. It is that stripey scrap garter stitch blanket I have been working on. The last time I showed it to you was two weeks ago, I think, and I had just a little scrap done. I am working on a thinner piece. I'm going to try not to clink too many needles around here. i got a pile of them. Sorry. And, yeah, I've gotten quite a bit more done since the last time I talked to you guys. I think last time I was about here. And I'm just doing really long strips with the gray, which this is two skeins, two strands held together of Knit Picks palette. This is, I think, the marble colorway. And I did a little bit of the leftovers from my daughter's blanket into that, and I am back to more gray. I'm not sure how far I'm going to go before I put in another color, but I'd say I'm about a third of the way, maybe pushing into halfway done with this strip. I've been knitting this blanket on US size 9s, and I'm just using various leftovers of worsted weight, sometimes something a little thicker like Aran weight. There's some DKs in there, and then I have a bunch of fingering weights that I'm holding double to get roughly a worsted weight. It's a, been a great way to use up a lot of little scrappies. It's very colorful, and while I'm not a fan of palette by itself, palette doubled up is actually quite lovely and squishy. And I have a lot of palette that needs using up that I've picked up over the years in various kits. Or I thought I was going to do things like color work mittens and they didn't pan out. So it'll be good for using those up. Let's see. Also this week I did a little bit of work on my Frisson shawl, which is by Brittany Wilson. I am doing this as a casual knit along with Kate over at Stitch, Stitch Addiction. Tripping over words again today. Trying not to make too much noise, and my needle stuck in my lace. Okay, so the last time I showed this to you, I was on 0.7, which I marked out with this cute little dinosaur stitch marker, and I did two more points to get to 0.9. Uh, Kate has since gotten her yarn for hers, and should be catching up with me pretty soon here, so I'll probably pick up on the pace a little bit. I didn't want to get too far ahead of her, because it's not a competitive knit along, but it is a friendly one. And, yeah, it's, it's looking good so far. I believe the pattern as written has 13 points. And I'm thinking, because of the sheer amount of yarn I have left, I may end up adding some additional ones if I think that the shawl is not big enough after 13. Oh, goodness, my desk is just full of stuff you can't see here, and I'm trying to find a place to set this. There we go. Uh, and one last thing, I pulled my April personal sock club yarn a few days ago and recorded it with my daughter doing it so I'm going to put that in here. So it's that time again. It's the end of one month and the beginning of the next. So my daughter here is going to help us pick out next month's personal sock yarn club sock. Sniffles here has a cold <laughs> so don't mind her. Now, okay. would you like to pick one out? Yep. What are you going to grab? I'm this one. I got this one. Okay. We're going to open it up. 
they're not going to hear all the crinkling because I'm going to cut this part out. Okay, so now, moment of truth. What do we have? Ooh. Oh, it's the socks for you and your brother. Yay! I want this one. Yeah, I kind of figured in. That one is for your brother. Yeah! Oh, and mommy's cheek this month is particularly good. What is it? Uh, Justin's organic peanut butter cups. Mommy likes those. Ooh. All right, so in the month of April, I am going to be knitting a couple pairs of kid socks. Yay! Yay! What do we say now? Um, bye! So, as you see, I am doing children's socks this month. Two pairs, because I kind of thought that one pair of children's socks and a 50-gram skein was sort of cheating, because everything else I'm knitting for this year is a 100-gram skein. So, as you saw, I pulled building blocks for my son and I pulled sugar violets for my daughter and the plan for these is to do two toe up tube socks for each of them and see how they wear. Um, I have knit socks for both of my children that have had um, gussets and heel flaps on them and they have both outgrown their socks so quickly that the amount of effort that was put into them just wasn't worth it. So I've decided to try tube socks and so far I have just this. I knit on it during like one episode of X-Files last night. That's the show my husband and I have just restarted now. Uh, we couldn't keep ourselves in Dexter. I think we started Dexter season six and both of us just kind of went, yeah, <laughs> didn't want to keep going. And we finished some other short shows and like we were watching Luther from the BBC, but that's short because uh, British series tend to seem to be tend to seem to be <laughs> uh, like six episodes long. There'll be longer durations, but a shorter season. And we decided we needed something to restart. So we decided the X-Files because there's nine seasons of it. And we haven't decided how we feel about that. When the X-Files first came out, I was 11 years old and I watched it when it first came out. And I thought it was really creepy and it was an awesome show. And I think at some point I had to stop watching it because my I have a very overactive imagination. And I was getting genuinely creeped out by the show to the point that I was jumpy and having problems sleeping. So I had to stop. And watching it now, it just it feels so dated. <laughs> and it's kind of ridiculous versus um, intriguing anymore. And as an adult, I've noticed all these plot holes and things that, as a child, it didn't bother me. But as an adult, I'm looking at it and going, well, that was a sloppy way to end that, or that was really lazy writing on their part. I kind of wish that the X-Files could be redone and do it more in the style, as I was mentioning, like BBC shows, where instead of having 23, 26 episodes, it would have been a six or an eight episode per series show and made them like an hour and a half long a piece, written them out a bit better, developed the plot lines better, explained things a little better. It could have been really awesome. So for now we're watching it more for the cheese factor than anything and just kind of going, well, that didn't make much sense. Like we just finished the one with the Amish think they were supposed to be alien people who apparently kill you by having intercourse with you. It, it was weird. <laughs> and they never fully explained what was going on or why. It was just, oh, these people are kind of weird. Oh, yep, the aliens came and took them. And apparently they had looked the same since the 1930s. So I think they were aliens. I don't know. And I digress because this is a knitting show, not discussing weird TV from the early to mid 90s <laughs> show. But anyway, I just did my usual um, Turkish cast on. I did 12 stitches and unlike my socks where I make the rounded toes, I start off with increasing really fast and then slowly uh, going to an every other round increase. I just did every other round increases to 28 stitches per needle for my son because my son has very wide long feet. And I'm hoping that these won't be too big. I forgot to try them on him this morning before he left. We had a rushed morning. And if they are all good to go, the plan is to knit these in plain stockinette until they are at least three inches up away from his heel. 
and then I'm going to start them as just ribbing for the rest however far I get. This skein was a little underweight instead of being 50 grams it's 48 and I haven't checked the sugar violets yet. So hopefully by next week I might already have a, a completely finished pair of socks because children's socks are so incredibly fast and unlike with adult socks I'm not too worried about doing these two at a time. I'm just going to knit one and then knit the other one and it'll be good enough. So that's what I've been doing. I have plans to start a sweater hopefully soon here. I wanted to do, oh gosh, what was that one? Now I can't remember. It was a, I think it's called Velvet Morning from Knitty. And that's that beautiful oversized color work sweater. But for some reason, I've been feeling very intimidated by it which is unusual for me. I don't tend to be intimidated by my knits, but I think the fact that I wanted to convert it to being in the round and then steek it and then I, instead of doing a picked up and horizontally knit button band, I want to do a vertical applied one like I did on my Uma cardigan. I think I wanted to change too many things and do too much at once and right now for whatever reason I just can't handle it. So I'm planning to knit Hero by Julia Falwell Clay. I believe that's her name. If I'm wrong, then sorry. <laughs> and I'm converting it to a sport weight pattern to use up some deep stash that I also had to buy some yarn to finish up using it because I tried de-stashing the yarn at first and no one was biting. And I thought, you know what, if I buy just some other colors, I could make a really awesome color work sweater with this and actually if I can pull it up on my phone I can show you my color inspiration real quick so you can get an idea. We'll see if my uh, camera will blow out the colors or not because it'll be on my phone but hopefully not. I am using this beautiful picture from Design Seed. It's called Temple Entrance and the colors on this are very similar to the colors I'm using. The main co body color is going to be a deep cherry red. I've got a mushroomy brown. I'm using a gold. And then I've got a kind of a teal color. When I ordered it from Miss Babs, it looked like it was a very deep emerald with just a touch of blue to it. And when it came, it was a an emerald emerald. And with the red, it looked like Christmas. <laughs> Which could be a good thing if that's what I was going for, but I wasn't. So I over dyed it with a bunch of blue. And now it's an extremely bright teal color, which I already know my camera is going to hate when I do finally show it. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm doing another knit along with Kate's group over in Stitch Addiction, where she is doing a shawl knit along starting this month. And I am doing a Martina Bem pattern. I have done Hitchhiker four times now, and I've decided to use another one from the collection that I purchased called Trillion. Now Trillion is another shawl very similar to Hitchhiker. I think it's knit side to side. And kind of like on the bias almost, but unlike Hitchhiker, which has the teeth, Trillion has this beautiful lace edging on it. And I don't know if you can really make it out because my pictures are black and white. I am cheap and do not have a color printer. I'm trying to see here. You can maybe see it a little better. But it's the same style, and I'm assuming that like all of her other patterns, it's going to be very easy to memorize. It'll be super great for knit date knitting and I'm actually looking to hopefully get out on my first knit date and I think at least six months on Friday night which I am excited about. I have not gotten out of my house to do stuff with other adults and to talk about the knitting and do fun stuff in a very long time and I am going to do it in another crafty girl strong sock which is her 8020 merino nylon base in Swedish Chef which was a colorway I had her custom dye up for me at the time in August of 2012. That's how long I've been sitting on this. But here is Swedish Chef, which is, it's lovely. It's light tans and kind of pastel into bubblegum pinks and then a very pretty blue-green. Many of you, I think, who watch this with me are about my age. And definitely those of you who are 5 to 10 years older than me probably have a lot of love for the Muppets. We all kind of grew up in the heyday of the Muppets before some of the not so good movies came out. I I haven't seen some of the newer ones. I've seen the newest but not the newer ones like The Wizard of Oz and a couple of things because I was a little too old for them at that point. But 
I have a lot of fond memories of watching the Muppet show proper on Nick at Night and then during the daytime watching Muppet Babies <laughs> and then of course the movies because a lot of the movies came out when I was a young girl and we always went and saw those so yes I think this is gonna be really pretty and a very good match for the pattern and if it works out I definitely have at least two more colors that I would like to knit in that exact same shawl because that's what I do when I decide that I really like a pattern and it's easy to work on while I'm in my car or when I'm on a knit date. And actually, I forgot one more work in progress. It still hasn't had a lot of extra work done on it, but I have still been plugging along on my socks from my hand eye. And they are a little bit longer, not much. One of these days I might try to take a still from every single one of my episodes I've shown these on so you can see that they are in fact getting longer. I did my usual 25 minutes at my appointment of the for these, and then the same day, I pretty much doubled the amount of time I worked on them. So they're getting there. I wish I could get these to show the proper color for you guys because they're so pretty. But if you've been following me on Instagram, you have a better idea of what color these actually are because I do show them off there quite a bit. So I'm hoping to maybe pick those up a little bit faster because while they are fun, to work on at immunotherapy. I also don't want them to take the next three months before I finally finish them. I might want to get them done a little bit sooner than that. Let's see, I didn't do any cross stitching this week. I kind of took a break on that and I didn't do any sewing, but I have done a lot of spinning, a lot. So we will go into spinning a yarn real quick. So let's start with things that I have finished. I showed you my um, Heavenly Hand Spinning e-spinner last week, the Vespera. I'm still trying to think of what I want to name it. I haven't decided yet. I have a few choices in mind and I'm trying to decide which one fits it best. And I played around last week with seeing how fast I could get singles spun up. And it turns out the answer is very fast. <laughs> So I finished not one, but two four ounce braids last week and managed to start another spin. So first I was, I think first I was showing you those full logs that I had done, which were the fluff Paul Worth in Bad Romance. I finished that and I've got this beautiful skein of it's purples and browns. Mm -hmm. Very, very pretty. Lots of blues. Soft, pretty colors. Just totally not what I was expecting based on what I saw. It's pretty good in general, but I do not have attention to Lazy Kate. I have a shoebox. And there were a couple of spots where my attention was not very good, and I have little weird curly cues, like right there, if you can see it, where I have a curly cue actually in my yarn. But for a first yarn on a spinner, I'm going to argue that didn't turn out too bad. Well, second yarn because, you know, first yarn's right here. It's not too bad. It's a bit dense, but it isn't terrible. It doesn't feel ropey or anything. It doesn't feel overspun, which I worried about. And it is thick and thin, but overall it's not, it's fairly consistent. I managed to get approximately 195 yards out of this to a four ounce braid, so it's, it's a worsted-ish weight. And I am going to see how many more skeins I get roughly in this weight category and see if I put it together with those or if I do something with it by itself. And then after that, I was feeling emboldened and I decided to go as fast as I could spinning on some two if by hand fluorescent rainbow which is more Polworth. I think everything I spun this week pretty much is Polworth because I love Polworth. It's so puffy and it's kind of magical and once it hits the water and you get done it, it plumps as it dries. It's just it's fun. Um, there had been a birthday gift for me last year from my friend Sarah. She bought me a couple braids of fiber. Knew that I liked two if by hand and she bought me a couple. And the other one is this, which is Fluorescent Rainbow, which I actually attempted to try and get the color repeats to be roughly the same length, and I did not succeed at that at all. As you can see, there are very few places where the fiber is the same color. But, like, I have little ones, like here, and some of these pinks matched up. But overall, 
I got some very definite barber pulling going on. This is a very chunky one, although this one has lots of really thin and then really thick spots. With how fast I was going, I lost control of the thickness of my single quite a bit and didn't pull it back out and fix it. Some spots are really fun where one of the singles is twirling with another color and then the other side is just blue. Can't see it because the camera is going to be a brat. I'm sorry. But overall, it's pretty. And again, it's probably a little bit more dense than hand spun should be. But it's not ropey, which is good. I mean, I, I spin worsted, so it's already going to have kind of that good, solid feeling to it. And this one was approximately 83-ish yards, so it's definitely chunky, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. This one I might do as a toy or something else just because of the crazy colors, and I'm not sure what else to do with it at this point, but... I'm really happy still with how it turned out, even though that one has a lot more thick and thinness issues because of how quickly I went. I got through two-thirds, finally, of my Spun Right Round BFL. I have left that in that... Actually, you know what? I'm going to go get it real quick. Through the magic of editing, you do not have to see me go get that. I am finally through two of the three singles of the Spun Right Round BFL in the Love Bug colorway. These are each between 1 and 3 tenths and 1.35 ounces of very, very thin BFL. I'm spinning this to do a 3-ply sock yarn. And I think what I have left of the braid is approximately 1.2 ounces. So I'm currently deciding if I'm going to just spin it as is and maybe try to spin the last third a tiny bit thinner to get the same yardage, but a slightly thinner single, or if I'm going to take a little bit of some of these leftover ends on both of these other two and try to spin some pieces of this in to try to give myself just a little bit more length. Because these are almost exactly the same size. I'm really impressed that... um. Despite the fact that I've been spinning this, I started spinning this in mid-December. It's very consistent, and it's making me super happy. And that is the cake, so I'm going to run away again. So many interruptions today. Sorry about that. I hadn't realized it had been so long since I started taking notes and getting through this process. So I did that. And then I started another spin on my wheel. And I am using leftovers of some more Spun Right Round, this time it's Polworth Base, in the Licorice and Glow Sticks colorway. I had used Licorice, Glow Sticks, and Lady Thunder to make a really pretty, very bright yarn for my friend Rachel as a pay it forward gift. And that one was very chunky, very much like this one. And she loved it, but I had a ton left over. I had done that one on spindles, and I think I used a little over an ounce of each of the three colors, so I've been sitting on in between two and a half and three ounces of each. So I've been spinning Licorice, which is what I did for the last few days, and it is a hot pink, bright blue green, and charcoal gray colorway. I don't know how much exactly was here. I've just been taking strips and making sure to pre-draft it. I am at the point in my spinning where I have to pre-draft everything I've noticed or else I get really inconsistent. And this is still thick and thin, but it's a lot less so than my last two spins. I'm planning to do these as a two-ply. I'm not sure how it's going to turn out, but it's fairly, fairly thin. I'm guessing that I'll end up in the DK-ish weight on these ones instead of closer to worsted. A few spots are a little bit thicker, and when it was starting to try to get blobby and it would try to get away from me, I would actually stop, wind the singles back out, untwist sections and force my you know, forcibly draft it out thinner and smoother. I discovered that in order to get the kind of control I wanted, I had to take the tension way down on my wheel and I have to um, have it spin slower so that the twist is going in sl more slowly and I have to wait longer before drafting to get the tw and then let the twist go up. But it's working. I have decided not to feel bad about it because part of me was like, oh, that's just terrible. But then I reminded myself that when I started spindle spinning, I had to park and draft too. And this is essentially the same thing as parking and drafting. And then last night, I just barely got a start on the second ply, which is glow sticks. I have one piece on my wheel right now, and I'm not going to show you. But here is the rest of the braid of glow sticks. 
little tiny braid I had made. Glow Sticks has that same blue green in it, a very light gray that has a very slight tinge of brown to it. It reminds me a bit of um, antique lace from Madeline Tosh. And then bright, bright screaming neon green, which is just washing out because my light today is crazy. But it's beautiful. And the two of them together are just so pretty that I think they're going to go really, really well together and make a really bright, very fun yarn. So I've been working on that, and I'm hoping to have that all done and maybe even plied and finished by the time I record next week. I think it could definitely happen, especially if I spend at least a half an hour each day. I found that it's a lot of fun to watch podcasts out at my computer again because I have my Vespera set up right next to me on a... Uh, a now I'm stuttering... <laughs> on a filing cabinet that's on casters and then I can sit in my chair here and turn and spin and watch and listen to a podcast at the same time which has been a lot of fun so I'm very excited about that and then after that's done I did another full log preparation for uh, that second skein of Polworth that my friend Sarah gave me which was two if by hand Polworth in Periwinkle and I have it split into two, roughly two ounce bags, again. Crazy how fluffy it gets when you take it. And I'll make sure to link again to Sherilyn's tutorial on how to do these. And yeah, I'm really excited. The colorway looked really consistently purple when it was in the braid. And then when I opened it up, I found all these amazing colors inside. Um, again, my Instagram, if you look, there were sp spots that looked like Twilight Sparkle. There was bright pink in there, and there was a lot of green, and there's just these crazy amounts of color. And it almost looks iridescent on the screen, but there's just so many colors in here. Let's see if I can find one that has some of the green in it. But, yeah, kind of Twilight Sparkle-ish camera's reading it is very dark blue but there's blue and purple and pink and just so many amazing colors they're all different they're soft <laughs> here we go here's one with some of the other colors I don't know if you'll be able to see there's green and there's a little bit of orange in this one which surprised me quite a bit this prologue almost wants to become two just let that become two <laughs> And just, yeah, crazy colors. I'm really looking forward to how this spins up. And I'm pretty sure it'll be started by next week, but I'm guessing it won't be finished. So, other than that, I haven't really had stash enhancement per se come in. I did have one thing come in. I had done a pre-order from the Cottage Needle on Etsy, which is a cross-stitch shop. And if you are familiar... With the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery, they recommend her shop a lot. She's one of the shops that they work with to do color kits and to sell some of their patterns through. I did the pre-order for the Pumpkins mascot, who I believe his name is Sugarloaf, for a thread minder for him. And it's so cute. Thread minders are a way for you to keep out just the strands of your thread and keep them on a thing that's handy at all times instead of winding and rewinding like I do. I believe this holds 10? No, 12. This holds 12 different colors, which works really, really well. It's slick. And that's all I have for you guys today. Um, it's been interesting. I've been trying not to talk about the weather too much, but we've been up and down again and had a bunch of snow dump. What was it? Over the weekend? <laughs> and then it's been melting again, and uh, everywhere that there's grass right now is a mud pit. It's, yeah, it's interesting. But it's starting to get warmer, and it looks like spring. And I know for a fact that it's spring because my dog is now shedding like crazy and blowing her coat. Uh, it's always something. <laughs> so, I hope you are all having a great start to your April, and I will talk to you next week. Have a lovely day, kittens. Bye.